Have you ever wondered how to make the footage from your action camera look more professional? Well, the DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro is, in my opinion, the first usable action camera for more professional looking videos. And that's because it has within it a 10-bit D-Log-M mode. Now, I'm not going to get all nerdy, so don't worry, but it basically gives you more flexibility over your color grading and your exposure leading to a much better image. And in this video, I'm going to show you the best settings and my top five tips to get the most out of the Osmo Action 5 Pro and make it look like you're filmed with a much more expensive camera. I'm also going to show you my color grading workflow that I use no matter what camera I'm working with, but there are a few steps you need to take with this camera because I've noticed that there are a few quirks that you need to fix before you start color grading and make it look better. So definitely make sure you don't miss any of the steps. If you don't follow this first tip, you won't be able to have as much control over your color grading or your exposure and you'll be stuck with the footage the way it is as you filmed it. What makes the Action 5 Pro so amazing is the fact that it it has a 10-bit D-Log color profile. 10-bit basically means that the camera is capturing more information, more color information, giving you more flexibility with your color grading. So you can actually push and pull the colors and the exposure a little bit further than you would be able to in a regular 8-bit, for example. So to see this in an action camera is very exciting. And that also means that you can make the footage look the way you want it to. You can put your own unique stamp on it. And also, it's gonna open up the possibility of matching the colors with your other cameras that you're using. So now your action camera footage won't stand out like a sore thumb against your mirrorless camera footage. But I'm really impressed with the colors. I love the way the greens look. I haven't had to do any tweaking with the color grading to make the greens look as nice as they are and rich. The skin tones are great as well. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But this is what the standard mode looks like. As you can see, the exposure isn't as good. It's a little bit grainy and it's just not very vivid either. So make sure D-Log M is switched on and that's going to help with all the other tips. It's just going to open up more possibilities. One of the reasons why action camera footage doesn't look cinematic is because people use auto exposure mode and the shutter speed is way too high and you don't get that natural motion blur. This is what we want. It looks like my hand is moving. We don't want this. See how choppy it is? Now, if you are doing action sequences and you need super smooth, stable footage, I do recommend leaving it in auto exposure mode for the shutter speed for the best stabilization results because you can sometimes get a little bit of jitter and that's normal on most action cameras. But here are some other key settings you might want to look at. So I'm always using 4K, either 24 or 25 frames a second if I want normal footage. If I want slow motion, I'm going at least 50 or upwards. Then if you are setting your shutter speed manually, make sure that the shutter speed is double whatever your frame rate is. So if you're shooting in 25 frames a second, make sure your shutter speed is at 50. If you're in slow-mo at 100 frames per second, make sure your shutter speed is 1 over 200. When it comes to ISO, you want to keep it as low as possible. If you go too high, it introduces noise and grain into your image, and we don't want that. We want a nice, clean image. But sometimes, depending on what situation you're in, you might need to bump that ISO up a little bit. But I recommend not going past 1600. That's when you run into a little bit of noise. Then your white balance. Now, white balance is a subject all in itself. I've got a video you can check out here if you want to learn more about it. But if you're outside, I recommend shooting at about 5800 Kelvin. Most people say 56, but on my mirrorless cameras, I usually use around 6200. I like it a little bit warmer. I felt like 5600 on the Action 5 was a little bit too cool for me, so I just bumped it up a little bit. 62 was too much on this, so 58 was a nice in-between. I've ruined my little display now, look, getting all excited. As I say, if you want more in-depth tutorials on white balance, check this video out. Another reason why action cameras tend to not look very professional is because they've got digital sharpening. So we want to turn that down. So you just go into your settings and turn down the sharpness all the way down to minus two and the noise reduction down to minus two as well. And that's going to give you a nicer, more pleasing image. Now this tip is gonna make the biggest difference to your action camera footage. One big reason why action cameras don't look very professional is because they have tiny sensors and they can't capture as much dynamic range as something like a mirrorless camera would be able to. So the shadows tend to be very dark and the highlights can often be blown out way too bright. And this is a dead giveaway that you're using a more affordable camera. But thanks to the 10-bit D-Log mode in the Osmo Action 5 Pro, we do have a little bit more flexibility. So I recommend exposing for the highlights 
And what I mean by that is if you're outside, make sure you can see the detail in the clouds. Or if it's a clear day and it's a blue sky, make sure the sky looks blue and it's not white and blown out. It helps if you're not pointing the camera directly at the sun because that's always gonna be way too bright anyway. But just bring the exposure down so that you can just see all the detail in the clouds or the sky. If you're not filming the sky, make sure you see all the detail in the brighter parts of your image. Doing this may make your shadows fairly dark, but because of 10 bit, you can raise those shadows slightly using the color wheels in post. And I'd rather retain the info in the highlights and have slightly dark shadows than have brighter shadows and more information there than a blown out sky. It just doesn't look very nice at all. Plus, doing it this way is also gonna give you more vivid colors. Because we're using a log profile to film with, it looks very flat on the screen and it's hard to tell what your colors are gonna look like and your exposure values. But with the new upgrade, they've actually introduced a monitoring look feature. So you can turn that on and it shows you exactly what your footage is going to look like once you've applied the LUT in post. And that's going to help you judge things by eye much better on the screen. So if you don't want to raise your shutter speed too much and ruin your natural motion blur and you can't go any lower on your ISO, I highly recommend getting some ND filters. So you can put these on and it's like sunglasses for your lens basically and it allows you to keep that natural motion blur with your shutter speed. Because they're not variable ND filters, where has that gone? Whew, thought I'd lost it then. Crikey me. I've lost a lot recently. Because these aren't variable ND filters, it can be a pain in the body to keep swapping them out all the time and checking your exposure and changing the settings, but it's well worth it for the end result, so I highly recommend picking some of these up. Using CPL filters is also a good idea. I've got a video all about those here. It's gonna make your image look a lot more professional. I found that on a cloudy day, the ND8 was a good choice, and then when the sun is fully out, 16 or 32 was a good choice as well. But there are some color casts. The stronger you go, it seems to have a red tint to it, so you might need to just compensate for that when you're color grading. Now, before you jump into color grading the footage, there are a few key things that you need to adjust to get a better result. So I'm going to go through my full process now and you can follow along. First things first, we want to put a color wheels layer on. Then we're going to add two custom LUT layers. We're going to use the D-Log M conversion LUT. So if you're using log footage, you need a conversion LUT to convert it to looking like it should. And then you can add your style LUTs after. Now I use gamut LUTs. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Highly recommend these, they look great. I also use them for my Lumix footage as well and they're the best LUTs I've ever used. There we go, so it's gone from looking all gray and flat to a little bit more colorful. It looks fairly bright, so I'm gonna go into the color wheels layer and bring the mid-tones down just to bring some of that detail back in the highlights. I'm also gonna pull the highlight slider down to bring that detail back in the clouds as well. And you can see, because of that 10 bit, I've got loads of detail in the highlights and I can probably bring up my mid-tones a little bit just to add a little bit more detail back in the shadows. I don't wanna to go too low with the highlights though because it starts to take away from the contrast a little bit. I still want it to look nice and punchy. What I have noticed is the footage can look quite red at times. So to get round this, I'm gonna add a color curve and see the red one here. I'm just gonna drag that bottom point just to the right slightly. Not too much, you can see what difference it makes. Just a, just a little bit, just to take some of that red out. And I'm doing it by eye, but I've got a full tutorial on how to check if things look to one way or the other. And you can see that video here. A tiny little bit, look, I'm not going much at all. And that solves the problem. So there's before and after. Just a slight difference. It just evens things out a little bit and fixes the white balance. Then what we can do is go into the second custom LUT and add your style LUT. So I'm using one of my own LUTs called Motel. It's quite a grungy look. I use it on pretty much everything, to be honest. I really like it. Again, link in the description. But that's fairly dark, so I'm just gonna go into my color wheels again and just adjust that by bringing the mid-tones up a little bit, and there we go. This is what it looked like before, no color grading. That's what it looks like after. And then just one more thing to bear in mind when grading the footage from the Action 5 is the skin can be quite oversaturated sometimes. So what we can do is go into our hue and saturation curves and then go to hue versus saturation, select the little color picker here, and then just 
select an area of the skin, that's going to choose the colour, and then you can just bring the saturation down slightly. Don't go too far, because it starts to look a little bit grey. But we don't want oversaturated skin. Look how it was before, it's a little bit too orangey, verging on Oompa Loompa. Sorry Danny boy, you're not an Oompa Loompa. Just to even it out slightly, just a tiny bit, look. There's the before, and there's the after. Before, after. Those little tweaks can make a huge difference, and they don't take that long to do. The greens already look fantastic, same with the blues especially if you're using this motel look that I've got on right now. It looks great. And then finally, because we've got 10-bit, we can actually bring up the exposure of the shadows. So this is what it was like before. It's, it's fairly dark and it doesn't look too bad, but because we've got more flexibility, look how much detail I can bring back in the shadows. I can see everything that's going on with the hoodie. I can see what's going on in the trees. I've just got loads of flexibility and it's great. In this case, I want it, I like it a little bit darker. Totally up to you, it's very subjective this. And it's a case of going back and forth with the colour wheels until you're happy, basically, and you've got the look that you want. There's so many colour grading tips that I could give you now, I don't want to dive too far into it, but I highly recommend checking out the links below to help. Oh, I almost forgot. There is actually one more thing I did to this footage to make it look even more professional and give it that cinematic edge. And also a slight vintage feel, and it's really easy to do. I just didn't want to take up too much time in this video, but highly recommend watching this video next if you want to know that extra secret sauce that I put on to make this footage look even better. And the best part is you can use it on any camera as well.